but I have a stepmother who is a very elderly now. She's 93, and she is in a home, and the last time I went to see her, um, she was woken up, she looked at me, squawked, and went straight back to sleep again. And that's very sad, and it's incredibly sad, for one very simple reason, that this was a woman who got a degree at Oxford in 1938 at a time when women didn't get degrees. She then went and became an interpreter at Bletchley Park during the course of the war, and she played a significant part in actually defending our country against the uh, Nazi uh, oppressor, and unfortunately to be a society and universities like Plymouth uh, around the country. And as I said, Plymouth University itself conducts a great deal of research into dementia in this area of policy. And one of the things that uh, uh, I'm very aware of is that uh, in September they had a very good conference where they asked the Prime Minister to come down. Unfortunately, he couldn't come, but we're going to see if we can have another go later on. And any help that uh, uh, my honourable friend might be here to encourage uh, the Prime Minister to come and actually participate in this dementia conference would be very helpful. And indeed, his lead in dementia challenges may certainly give an impetus uh, to the, the whole thing as well. Uh, and they do a lot of work at the to HMS Drake, which is taking a really big lead on this dementia and making sure that that happens uh, elsewhere within the Ministry of Defence. Uh, now, in Plymouth, there are around about 3,200 individuals with dementia, and it is forecast that that is going to rise by 35% within the next 10 years. But this is just the beginning. The diagnosis rate is 39%, which is estimated to increase by 27% before 2021. And this means that there are a large number of people in my constituency who do not have access to the care and support they need on a daily basis. The new NHS uh, mandate commits to drive up diagnosis rates, which can only be a good thing for both sufferers and their families. And I know that the Government intends to see clinical commissioning groups and the NHS Commissioning Board working together on this aim. And I would welcome uh, my honourable friends uh, and their carers need to be looked after. But also, we need to make sure, Mr Speaker, that we actually talk to the relatives too, to make sure that they understand what the process is. There's nothing worse. None of us like being ambushed to do, whether we be politicians or individuals. And it's very, very important that we therefore make sure that we help those uh, family members to actually work their way through, those, uh, through that suffering as well.